hello it's Sarah and in this video I am prepping these little boxes so that they're ready to paint when I'm when I get ready um, I had to do another coat on this so I have the paint out and base coating is not my favorite so I like to have it done like I have this egg ready to go anywho I removed oops that's the magnet I removed the hinge from this box already so let me show you how I did that I just actually oops I want to remove this ta uh, sticker gently yay there was another sticker on the bottom that I already removed um, and I may add my own hinges I'm not sure because this that one was specifically wonky this one's kind of wonky too um, not sure why, but they are uh, like a one of those. I don't know if this is considered a Phillips head or a, a which one's re the Phillips head. I always I don't I just never computed that in my brain, but it's the X. So I have this little. I think I got this at Dollar Tree. Maybe I don't know. It's like a little tool kit of screwdrivers. So I'm just simply unscrewing the screws out of the hinge and then I'll have instead of working oopsie working with a box that has two um, or it's like harder to work with I'll have two pieces of wood separate um, it's magnetized so there's a little magnet embedded oopsie I don't know where that one went right here screw and then this one. These, the screwdriver has like this swirly thing on the end so you can kind of twist it like this. I don't know if I got it at Dollar Tree but it's pretty good. Alright, so I took the hinges off. And this is from Hobby Lobby. But they don't always do a great job of sanding. I have all this different sandpaper. So I'm just going to take like a more rougher or a more rough grit. We also have a, um, a sanding belt in the basement that I could really just take this down and but I, I tend to overdo it and I make things worse than they <laughs> I don't know that's not even really helping let me think it's kind of bringing out the tooth a little more but I'm just going to go around and get that uh, anything that's like obviously sticking out like see that one that's very rough that's better and then I'm gonna seal the wood so when you paint with acrylics they are a water-based paint and because this is pine there's a little thing there that's okay um, pine is a very porous wood. It's light and the paint, the wood will just absorb the paint. It'll just soak, like the paint will suck into the wood. So we want to create a barrier that's going to, um, so that the paint, when I start to paint, the paint just sits on top of the wood. It doesn't suck in. Oops, let me take this out. Yeah, I just figured I'd turn on the camera and show you. So this is what I would do. Now for the inside of the box, I'm probably going to paint it gold or black. It depends. Um, but I have gold like, uh, where is it? Probably right here. Um, nom, 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 nom. Something like this is actually a bronze. But a metallic gold, I like that on the inside of my boxes. Or silver. Or any color you want. But... I, I typically would finish it inside. Um, this is a little rough right here. So just anything that's going to kind of look splintery. Because the paint, once I seal it, the paint will uh, make it look smooth and nice. But yeah, like you don't want it to have like splintery little areas. This looks pretty good. And also when I pick my boxes, I tend to see there's a little like something down there I tend to make sure it's not split because I mean 
I don't know where these boxes are made, but I try to like look at the joints and make sure that they're not coming apart. And you know, everything's kind of, because there's more than one usually that you have to choose from. So if one's a little split, you know, pick the one that isn't. Um, but that looks good. So I'm gonna just give this a sample. This is where the sticker was. So there's still a little goopy stuff on there. And this is the part that I really don't like, but because this is going to be done in the a la Barb Nielsen style, which I'm just trying to grab my little piece that's over here. It's very like smooth and pastel-y and I want it to look smooth and shiny and nice. So if I don't do this prep, you know, I, then I get what I get. So. I'm learning that about myself. When I skip steps, you get what you get. And if you do the if you do the prep, usually you end up with a nicer uh, result. So I'm just going to do that just for today. And guess what? Another day I might skip it, but just for today I'm doing it. And I figured I'd turn on the um, camera. So yeah, this is a little rough too. So this is with a more of a, let's see, I don't know the differences, but this says silicone carbide waterproof abrasive paper. It's 240. If that means anything to you, good for you. <laughs> but I, I tend to steal it from the basement or whatever. Or I don't know. I think I probably bought some at the Dollar Tree or I go to Home Depot sometimes and I'll buy like a multi-pack or I'm not really it's nothing that interests me that much so I don't pay a lot of attention so I can't really tell you where I got it or anything it's just from years of doing this kind of work I end up with a lot of different stuff all right so this has been rough sanded I feel comfortable and confident that I can go ahead and seal it and to do that, I'm going to use the Josonia All-Purpose Sealer. And I'm going to place an order today because I need to order a stencil. I'm pretty sure you can get this on Amazon. But the thing is, any wood sealer, all-purpose sealer for surface preparation, I just like this one. I've used it for years. And i um, going to mix it with a little bit of paint. First of all, let me just... So I'm going to use this... Uh, this is a... Short Touch Oval Wash Brush. And I'm just going to do a quick coat of white, plain white paint. This is like the third coat um, for a project that I'm, I'm going to be doing. This is the rooster piece that I'm going to be doing. And I'm really loading up my brush with a lot of white and water. And putting a nice, slick, wet coat of paint on here. So see how it's moving really well because I have paint and water in my brush not just paint and it's thin and it's it's spreading evenly so this is because uh, it's the third coat I'd rather do two or three thin uh, slick coats than like gloppy coats because it just looks better in my opinion I'm going to flip it around. Try not to splash myself because I move so fast. Um, so I'm playing pickleball. I just started. And one of the things that is such a good tip for me is let the ball come to me. That's what I, one of the first things I learned. Because I tend to be aggressive <laughs> in my life. I just move fast. I move uh, you know, without thinking a lot of times. So letting the ball come to me, it's a, it's a, what do they call it for life? It's a metaphor for life. Just sit, don't do, just be. Anyway, so that's my third coat. I'm going to let that dry and I'll give it a very light sanding and then I'll be ready to go with that one. But for this box, I'm going to put out a little bit more white and about that much of this sealer. So one to one, we would say, a one to one ratio. 
So I have two boxes. I didn't sand the other one yet, but if I wasn't filming, and I mean that's probably more, I'll add a little more paint. Just because you can tell it's like a little thicker. And then I'm just going to mix them together like this. So I'm just taking a shortcut. Instead of doing a straight coat of sealer, which wouldn't be any color or anything, I'm mixing a little pigment into it. And that way I get a base coat. It's like a cheat. I get an extra base coat on here. So maybe I won't have to do as many. See how thin it is, though? I thinned the white down. But it is, it's a little bit of a cheat to get. I just start with the white. It won't take me as many coats of white to get a nice base coat. And because I don't know if I want to do these edges, I think I do, but I'm just I'm going to hold it from inside. I'm going to do the bottom. And what will happen is this is going to bring that tooth that I just sanded off up again. It's going to suck into the wood. The wood is going to grab and pull it in. The pores of the wood are going to pull this liquid in and then the, the sealer is going to harden and kind of make it, it's going to seal the pores, right? So it's, I don't know if it's magic or what. <laughs> it's chemistry. But we're going to seal the wood this way. And one coat usually does a good job. I did not do this to the MDF. I don't believe that MDF is a porous surface. It's a um, manufactured type of wood, and I think it's bit, it's like pulp. It's like a pulpy thing, and I've heard it said that you don't need to seal it, so I haven't. I haven't been. Um, anywho, I, am, I don't know everything. I could be wrong. If you think better and different, do it your way. That's just how I do it. So I have that done. See how it's just a tint? Oh, it's looking really white on the camera compared to this. So I'm just going to let that dry. I have my fan on because it's like 80 degrees out. Um, do I want to do the inside? I don't know. Just for now, I think I'm going to work on the outside. So just the top. And this is where my main design is going to be. The box is going to have like some checks and maybe a, um, a grapevine or a, a vine of some sort going around that end. So I'm going to go down the sides of the edges. And see, it'll bring back up all that I sanded off will kind of come back up and I'll sand it again and then after that I'll just go on with straight paint and I'll keep sanding gently I'll use a much finer grit sandpaper just to sand down any uh, kinda like I'm a pretty smooth painter but if I had any ridges you know any thick and thin areas it would smooth it all out into even paint just paint, smooth, even paint. Oh, God! Well, I, I dropped my paintbrush on me. And I'll tell you what, I, what I'm going to do for that. <laughs> I had an itchy nose, and I dropped my paintbrush on my shirt. <laughs> so, alright. So that is now sealed. And... A gentle and a light base coat. This is not yet. Just thinking. I'm going to paint this gold. I think I'm going to paint this white because you know what? I think I might put a saying inside. I'm going to put a saying inside the, the, the lid. Like some words. So I'm painting over the, um, the holes for the hinge and I'm painting over the magnet for just for now. Try and smooth it out. And I'm gonna like, oh, my nose is still itching. I'm gonna take a Q-tip. I'm gonna put this in the water while I grab a Q-tip. I'm just like kinda clean that off. I just cleaned it off with a Q-tip. 
I'm going to like kind of let it lean like that to dry. And this is what I'm going to use right now on my shirt. I have this pink soap. It's a preserver, cleaner, and conditioner. And if I put this on my shirt, that's my gum. If I put this on my shirt right now and just kind of like put it in the fibers of my shirt and le and then when I wash my shirt, it won't, the paint won't absorb into the fibers and it'll wash out. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, other than that, I'm going to do the same thing to my, a couple of eggs. I'm going to base coat these white. These are the new ones that I got from, this was Hobby Lobby, and these were Hobby Lobby. So they're a little different than the ones I already had. Um, same thing, I'm going to use the mix of sealer and paint one-to-one, -one, sand them, and then I can just go back with straight white paint, and they'll be ready to go. Maybe two more coats of just straight white paint. And sand, a little bit of sanding in between. Alright, so that's it. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.